welcome in to the PFF Podcast. Steve Palazzolo back here along with Sam Monson continuing our look at the history of PFF. And this is the episode you want to listen to. It's the one with the big boss, Chris Collinsworth. We have a great interview with Chris coming up in a little bit. First, Sam, welcome. You already got welcomed back earlier in the week by Mike, but welcome from me back from vacation. Yeah, that's nice. Thanks. Good to be back. Great. Good to have you back. We missed you <laughs> a little bit. Not really, but it was it was okay without you. It was okay. We continued on with the history of PFF. We continued with looking at all of the cast of characters, and I do suggest you do go back to the archive and check out the Neil Hornsby episode, the Ben Stockwell episode, and everything that leads up to us talking to Chris. Before we get to the big boss, just want to thank everybody. We've been asking for a little bit of survey help over the last couple of weeks. You guys did a great job filling that out, so do appreciate that. And we're also continuing our giveaway, our big giveaway of PFF Elite, the newest PFF product. We have PFF Edge and PFF Elite. Elite is the $200 product that is filled with our signature stats, award-winning fantasy football analysis and tools, and much, much more, perhaps even some Awesome early bird draft content coming very shortly that I'm working really hard on. Little 2018 draft preview. All of that included $200 value, and all you need to do is give us a five star review on iTunes, leave your Twitter handle, leave your email address, and you'll be in the running to win a free $200 PFF Elite package. Last week's winner was at Stakanova. That's our pronunciation for the day. Stakanova won. So he gets a free $200 PFF Elite one-year subscription to all of the goodies at Pro Football Focus. So please get over to iTunes, leave the five-star review, and you might be the winner next week. I think Elite is certainly worth the 30 seconds of your time. Be sure to mention Sam and Steve specifically, maybe even Mike, and say you guys do a great job. Leave the five-star review. Now... Chris Collinsworth, let's get into it. He bought the company, bought majority owner starting in 2014. Sam, you've been here almost since the beginning. Give me your general thoughts, overview. What were your feelings when when Chris joined us? He joined, joined the team. Yeah, well, that was an interesting time because, you know, Neil phones everybody up individually and, and says to them, so there's an offer to buy the company on the table. And this was, Neil had always said all the way along that he wasn't really interested in selling PFF. The, the deal was not, or the goal wasn't to make money out of this, wasn't to be, um, make money out of the sale of the company rather. Um, you know, it was going to be us all along. And it was only that Chris, Chris was a specific type of person, you know, a guy within the NFL circles, a guy who clearly shared the the ethos of of the, the guys within PFF, a guy that wanted to take PFF in the right direction, that was able to convince him to, you know, turn that attitude around and, and completely change his, his opinion on the idea. And then obviously sold all of us on the idea of um, selling out to Chris as well and, and bringing him on board and, you know, allowing him to to take this company to the next level, which is exactly what he's done with bringing, you know, starting up college football um, and and doing all the other media deals that we've been able to do with him on board. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, definitely a lot of fun to hear that coming from Neil. Like you said, it wasn't like we were shopping the company, so to speak, at the time. But, you know, the right person comes along and, you know, you 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 hear what he has to say. And and I think you're right on as far as Chris uh, you know, kind of fitting the mold and fitting, you know, where we wanted to go. Neil, uh, I think like any founder or owner is uh, very passionate about PFF. I mean, I think we established that in the Neil Hornsby episode, which you should absolutely check out in the archive over an hour with the godfather of PFF. And he wasn't going to just turn it over to, to anyone. He wasn't going to just give it up to any, uh, anybody. And it wasn't, and it wasn't always about, you know, making a, making a big sale or anything like that. It was certainly keeping PFF going and really trying to, uh, build some kind of legacy. And I think Neil always felt that, that Chris was that guy that could, that could help do that. So, um, that was 2014 fast forward to now 
2017, uh, Chris, still the majority owner, he's implemented uh, a lot of his ideas through the years and, uh, you know, taking what he knows about, you know, TV, the business and uh, getting the name out there. And that's really shaped a lot of what we've done as a company. So um, I love his story. I love his story about how he first talked to Neil. He'll get into that. So let's go right to Chris Collinsworth, the majority owner of PFF. And I am here with the owner of PFF, Chris Collinsworth, the next step as we go through the history of PFF. Chris, welcome to the podcast. I think it's your second or third time on the PFF podcast. Yeah, we've been around here a couple of times, so it's fun. You guys are uh, starting to tear it up. We're starting to get listeners and sponsors, and pretty soon you'll be uh, an entity unto yourself with PFF. Now, I know you get a little nervous talking in front of a lot of people. Just mm-hmm. uh, just be yourself. That'd be my advice here. Now, we're, we're going to talk about the history uh, we've been talking about the history of PFF. We're going to talk about where you came in, 2014, and just take us through how that all happened. How did you find PFF? What was that process like? And, and how are you owning? How do you own us right now? How are you my boss? <laughs> I own you. Um, it, it was an amazing day, really. I, I um, NBC had asked me to do a post-game show, and I was like, yeah, no problem. I can do a post-game show forget that I haven't watched any games during the course of the day. And I was probably the least qualified person because we have a lot of work to do leading up to the ball game. And so we're busy with all that, but I do watch a game occasionally in between as, as we're doing it. But I thought if I was going to do a post game show, I was going to need to uh, have to bluff my way through it a little <laughs> bit. I'll just put it like that. So I started fishing around the internet and I came across this site, pro football focus. I had never heard of it before. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, went on there and they had some color coded depth charts. So I started looking at this and I'm like, hmm, pretty good, you know? And, and as I said, all right, let me look at some of the teams I really have just done and talked to the coaches and really had right. studied. And, you know, there were a couple that I surprised me a little bit, but for the most part, it kind of fell in line with what the coaches were saying. Um, and so I, at the end of this, so then I put in my credit card. Da, 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 which we like you all to do, but we put it in my <laughs> credit card, and and so I pay my twenty six ninety nine. I go a little deeper and I get the premium stats and you know do the whole thing. I'm, I'm like, this is pretty good stuff. And so then I come back and so I type up in the upper right hand corners of the thing that said contact us, and I've seen it on every website. And I don't think I've ever done it in my life, but I had to figure out. I said. You know, I, I think my message was, who are you? Are you guys coaches? You know, this is Chris Collins' work. Boom, boom, boom. Here's my phone number. So about three minutes later, my phone rings. And it's this guy with a British accent. And all I can think from the minute I answered the phone was, Son of a gun. I just got hustled out of 26 bucks. I swear, that was all I could think. That was the only thought that I could go. And I was mad. I was legitimately mad. And Neil Hornsby, who's the founder of PFF, is on the other line. And so I said, I'm going to end this in about two minutes. So I started asking him about inside linebackers and safeties and left guards and centers and things that nobody knows anything about right and after about five minutes i shut up and started listening (laughs) because this guy obviously knew way more about the league than i did and so the same question came back in my mind i was like who are you (laughs) i I go what is this whole thing and he started explaining to me the history of this company, and he started from London, and he loved Dan Marino, and he fell in love with the stats, and he quit his high-paying job to start doing this hobby as a full-time basis, and blah, 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 blah. And to make the story a really complete circle, about three years prior to that, I was doing the Super Bowl in Indianapolis between the Patriots and the Giants, and I um, so I didn't fly. I, we just drove over from Cincinnati, which is like a two-hour drive. So my, my uh, I'm driving. My wife, I don't know if other couples do this, but whoever's in the passenger seat has to entertain the one that's driving. So, yeah. so she had the Wall Street Journal. And so she's reading me the Wall Street Journal. 
And on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and remember, this is three years before this whole phone call. Right. On the front page of the Wall Street Journal is this story about the Giants, the New York Giants' secret weapon in the Super Bowl is this Brit named Neil Hornsby and Pro Football Focus and how the analytics has made such a big difference for the Giants and blah, 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 blah. So Holly said to me, you should put that on the, the air for the Super Bowl. And I scoffed like I probably have never <laughs> scoffed before. I was like, I'm not putting on some story about some Brit who does a couple of data points and it worked its way into the New York Giants. You know, so I'm right. giving her the whole thing. So fast forward now three years and I've got that Brit on the phone and he's explaining to me about pro football focus. And so I'm thinking, well, I should really, you know, this is pretty good. And I, a little bit more, I started looking a little bit more and then I found out they had, I don't know, whatever it was, eight or nine teams that they worked right. with at that time. Started talking to some of the teams and different things. And it, it was a legitimate deal. And it just stunned me because I'd never heard of anybody or anything that was actually engaged from outside the NFL in NFL game planning. I had right. never heard of that before. And so I was even more intrigued and I dug into it. And long story short, after I couldn't have been very long, it's like one of those, uh, those marriage proposals after you know somebody for a couple of months. So we just started talking about ways I could be engaged with them. And then we started talking about how much is the company worth. And uh, somehow, Jen, my buddy, Jack Cassidy, who ran Cincinnati Bell here in Cincinnati forever, I talked to him about it a little bit. We got Dave Calhoun, who used to run AC Nielsen, who runs Blackstone in New York now, is probably one of the most powerful financial guys. He looked at it. He bought into it and invested. Uh, we've got a couple of new investors that until they sign their paperwork, I'm not going to tell anybody about, but they're going to be exciting, exciting, very business. exciting yes. investors. Um, and I, it has been just an unbelievable run. So I bought the company literally like two months afterwards, still own over 50%. My greatest fear in life is that somebody's going to come in here and start telling me what to do. So I'm trying to keep it right there. 51%. <laughs> Um, but it's been fantastic. With 29 of the 32 teams, now we, we have relationships 29. with. 29, yeah. It, it's changed since we started the history of PFF podcast. We're up to 29 now. Yeah, 21 major NCAA teams. And some of them don't like it when we say who they are. So we won't say who they are. But big time college football programs, NBC, CBS, ESPN, Pac-12 Network. And now we're on our way, thanks to our brilliant podcast team, of becoming much more of a of a B2C, business to consumer kind of site. We've always been B2B and selling to various people, but um, now we have a couple of products uh, out there on the market and uh, we hope people enjoy them. Yeah, I mean, first off, Neil pulls no punches when he says, it, it really was about three minutes that he called you after the email, no right? Question. I mean, it was, it was immediately, he does not hide the fact that he was giddy when he said, oh, Chris, Chris Collinsworth, call, you know, I gotta call that guy. And uh, he talks about that on his episode, the Neil Hornsby episode, which is in the archive, which I do suggest everybody listen to, over an hour with the godfather of PFF discussing the history. And uh, you kind of got into my next question a little bit, you know, how you've seen us evolve. Obviously, when you took over, it was 8, 9, 10. It was in that 10-team range. Now we're at 29. And like you said, big partnerships and other deals. And, you know, we're trying to give back to consumers now with PFF Edge, PFF Elite, after, you know, some people complained a little bit. They wanted their signature stats. They wanted their premium stats. But we gave you know, our fantasy players some unbelievable information and tools to work with. And just your hardcore, your diehard football fans have something now with PFF Edge and PFF Elite. So a lot of good stuff as we give back to the consumers uh, as we've grown these last couple of years. Well, and there were two, two main reasons that I bought the company besides I thought we could grow it. But you... A, I thought we could expand into college football, yep. which took us from 60 employees to 360 employees, right. right? Which is one of those, until you've ever run a company and you've been in bed at night and you go, I don't know how I'm going to pay all those people. I have no idea how this is going to work. But we took our shot, you know, we fired our bullet and we we'd see what was going to happen. But I thought that we could take the premium stats and turn it into a media business, which it has become right. and, a, and a big part of our business. So... That's the big sales to the networks and, and a huge part of it. 
but the other thing I thought we could do is turn it into a fantasy business. And we did very well our first year in the fantasy world. Uh, we're building a new database now, which is, I think, going to blow people away. The, the ability to ask questions about football, anything football related, and get an answer on the NFL and NCAA levels is a, is a very exciting thing. But what it's going to do for fantasy football and the number of, I mean, we got guys with PhDs and mathematics and these brilliant IT guys building these systems that is sort of wowing networks and, and teams. And, um, and of course, the core of it is these poor people that have to work analyzing these games and staying up all night. And you've been there for a long time. Uh, it's an incredible workload. Our people work unbelievably hard. Yep. Over 10 years, we've gotten a lot of feedback from the teams. But I think the thing that really sets PFF apart from anything else is the credibility. Um, you know, no matter who the media company may be out there, um, nobody is selling to 29 out of 32 NFL teams. And the way that um, we've been able to integrate into their film studies and coaching is, is a real tribute to the, the people that, uh, like yourself, that have been a part of this company for 10 years now. And, and uh, I, 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 we've got some amazing things coming up that if we happen to close a couple of deals here that are in the works, that it's going to put us in a different universe. So it's, um, the advice from long ago was if you have the data, you have a chance to to do really well, and and um, that's what we do. Yeah, I mean, it, it is exciting because it feels like we've just really scratched the surface on, you know, we had Ian Perks on the podcast last week and or two weeks ago, and he was like a one-man show for years. He's got a full team now to develop these things behind the scenes like you're talking about, and I think everybody's going to benefit from them very shortly. Can let me just ask about NFL teams real quick and what you've seen. I know you've sat in on meetings. Of course, you meet with teams every week as you're prepping uh, for your games. How have you seen the interaction or how have you seen that change even since you took over the company? How teams are using it, uh, you know, the different levels of respect and, and just how they view PFF as a company and, and just a part of their daily process? It, it was when I first got involved, it was who, what, you know, and it was always the same question. Same question I asked. Who are those guys? Yeah. Are they coaches? Are they, you know, and obviously now we have the pro coaches network that oversees our grading. Yep. But you know as well as I do, our guys, after 10 years of feedback from NFL teams, our guys are pretty spot on. There's very little correcting going on. We've had multiple coaches, uh, Chip Kelly, Mike Shanahan, Bill Muir, we have just tons of guys that have come through here. And they're all blown away. And usually, usually they want to invest in the company. They cannot believe the level of expertise and knowledge that the, our crew has. And, and neither can I. I'll be honest with you. That, but it's the same way guys like Bill Belichick and those guys hire their scouts. You sit in a room and you watch film and you draw plays until your fingers bleed and your brain melts and patterns emerge. And pretty soon you start to have a pretty good understanding of what the game of football is all about. Uh, and then you integrate it into the software and into the film study. And, you know, the, it's an amazing process to be able to go through now and say, I want to watch all the inside spin moves of Dwight Freeney. And you go, -da 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 -da. and there it is. It. And, and you go, that's unbelievable. And then you go, I, all right, I want to see all the outside uh, pass rushes, uh, Vic Beasley or whatever the case and butt it up and they come one after another and it, it's I, I think we've only touched the surface on how the teams are going to use it right because if i ran a team and we're not this far along but only but a couple of teams i would say all right left tackle here you go you're going to watch that pass rush you're going to watch all the stunts that they've ever run on that side of the line of scrimmage and that's all you're going to watch i'm not putting on the team tape i'm not we're not doing this for an hour uh, I mean, for four hours, four days a week and get ready. I want you to watch that one hour tape five times this week and lock it into your brain so that you know that move that's coming before it's coming at you. Yep. And that's where we're going to get, especially with NCAA football, because they only get 20 hours with the kids. And you have to begin to consolidate the way that they learn because they have homework, they have girlfriends, they have to eat, they've got, you know, it's tough. 
And this really simplifies it, not just for me and the coaches, but for the players as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like we are just scratching the surface from a team level. They, they've been so focused on the data for so many years, and that is a huge part of it, that objective data that fuels their game plans every single week, saving them time. And I feel like we're still just scratching the surface on what the grades mean and how to use those, and we're starting to get a better feel for that, hopefully get even more involved in personnel decisions, the draft, uh, free agency, and all sorts of different avenues at that level. So um, any any last thoughts to just sum it up? Anything you want just the fans to know about where we are as a company, where we're going, and you know, one last little plug for those for these new products. Cause we, you know, we spent a lot of time saying the fans need something. I, we have this massive database, the fans need something of real value, and we went back and forth a lot coming up with Edge and Elite, which we think are great products for our fans. Well, and we've got a new uh, a new website coming out. And a new site. Like July something, 7th. Don't something. put a number on it just in case, not a, but I not think it's day, early July. Yeah, our guys will squirm if I say the number. <laughs> uh, but it's sort of the kickoff for fantasy football season. Uh, that's when people really start to get engaged with what's going on in fantasy football. So that, And I think people are going to be blown away by our new site this year. But 2018 is our year. 2018, I think that this company is going to go places and do things that nobody's going to believe. Um, that we have a chance to sort of alter the way that, that not just the teams and the coaches, and the, the, but the fans study football. Oh, yeah. Uh, and especially the fantasy and, you know, people like to have a little – a little wager in their office pool occasionally and uh, it kind of works out all right for people that study PFF. Uh, But I think the big movement over this year and the next year is going to be around fantasy football. Some of the relationships that we'll end up with in fantasy football are going to be tremendous. Uh, And I'm still blown away by the fact that I I wish I could just brag about the various teams. We don't do that here. We don't talk about, we try to keep a very low profile as right. to who our teams are. Well, once we get to 32, it makes it a lot easier. That'll be a lot easier. That's easier. We'll be able to do that a lot easier. But uh, it's a great source of pride because I, I don't think that anybody can compete from a credibility standpoint with what we're doing because of those relationships. And uh, obviously, we're really proud of it. I'm proud of all the guys. I they, they're, People work so hard in this company. I mean, they just just and they do it out of love i mean they do it because they just love it It, it, this is not a job if it's a job you'll never survive you if you don't have a real passion for what we're doing you'll never make it in this company but the people who have that passion who just want to live in that football world like me like you it's the greatest thing in the world and um i just finally we should say thank you to to the fans and the teams and all the networks and all our relationships because uh, it's been great. Absolutely. Thanks again to Chris Collinsworth, the owner, majority owner of PFF. Thanks again for to Chris for taking the time out. Believe it or not, he does have a busy schedule here during the off season. You know, at PFF right now, we're just, it's a lot of planning and trying to figure out what we're doing for next season and yeah, making the, the pieces fit. And we, we caught Chris in between a couple meetings what do you think, Sam? I think we had a pretty good idea. We've heard him describe, you know, the the phone call with Neil and how it's evolved and his passion. Uh, I think he summed things up pretty well. Yeah, that that was the best I've heard him tell that story. Actually, I've heard it a few times. Him give people the rundown of how he came to to discover PFF and ultimately buy into the company. I think that was the best version of that story that I've heard. So that's that's good. Uh, bonus for the podcast but i think what makes chris a really interesting person to get on this uh, and talk about pff is that he comes from a completely different place to any of the rest of us you know even all of the the various cast of characters of pff have all come from a lot of different places and a lot of weird walks of life and there aren't too many stories that are the same but chris is from a completely different place to all of us because he came from inside the machine if you like from the nfl world that we all kind of know and follow you know he's the guy that does the sunday night football gig who who travels week to week to different nfl teams talks to these guys um on a, a regular basis and you know comes essentially from inside this nfl world that we we've been slowly ingratiating ingratiating ourselves in so he's he's really well positioned to be able to kind of 
speak to the, the, the growth of PFF from their point of view. You know, we could tell you what it's like from our side of the, the divide and, and how the, the doors have opened a little bit and the, how people are more receptive to us now. But Chris kind of gives you a better idea of exactly what those guys are thinking and exactly the, the improvement of, of our standing within that community. Yeah, I think one of the, the things I've learned a lot from Chris is when, you know, we've done a lot of film study, right? We've sat down and it, it's draft season and we fire up some tape and uh, it's a bunch of PFF guys and Chris and and we're just watching. And I just like getting his insight because, you know, a lot of times we see the game one way and he'll say, you know what, this guy does this well, which I think will work well in, in these couple schemes or something. It just gives a little bit different angle. And then, like you said, it comes from inside the NFL. So he always... You know, the same way he predicted a couple of years ago, uh, Chris Strodamus, if you will, that quarterbacks were going to go numbers one and two in the Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, uh, that draft. And he essentially predicted the Rams and Eagles to be the teams to do it. And he did that like a month ahead of the actual pick. That was like his inside the NFL intuition. I just have a feeling these quarterbacks are going to go one and two. And I feel like he's given insight on some other, you know, free agent signings. You know, why did the Panthers let Josh Norman go? He just kind of had like a different angle on it than maybe we would have. And I do like that combination of, of being able to get that insight. And then I feel like he takes a little bit from us because he can't watch every game. Like he was talking about, he can't watch every team, but we have at least, you know, some kind of information or some kind of feel for these teams. And um, I, I think it's a good give and take. And, you know, he's done uh you know, a big part of what he does is is diving into the PFF data to let him prepare for his Sunday night show and for Thursday night now. You know, essentially doubling his workload, which, you know, when I first got to PFF, didn't realize how hard you actually have to work to do color commentary, Sam. It's not, it's a thankless job. Not a lot of people like color commentators, but I got to see just how hard he works to make sure that he's on point every Sunday night. Yeah, I think that's one thing we didn't quite get to in that that interview is is talking about how much work that is because it's easy to assume and certainly with some of the color commentators, you know, Chris tends to have a reputation as one of the better ones out there, but some of the other guys, you could easily imagine that they just rock up on the game day without having done any preparation whatsoever and just let roll whatever comes out of their mouth. But for the better ones out there, there's a lot of preparation involved, and they are watching a significant amount of tape to try and get a handle on, on each and every one of the players that they're likely to see in that game. Um, and it's, it's incredibly time-consuming. And you know they've got to try and commit all these nuggets of information to memory so they're able to recite them whenever the time comes up. Um, and it's not, not until you kind of get working with them that you see just how much Chris has to work. So when you add a Thursday game to a schedule, it's, it's not a small thing, you know, even ignoring the logistics of having to hitch up from one place, fly directly to the next place and all that kind of stuff. Um, just the sheer volume of workload that you're talking about. So yeah, I mean, PFF's big selling point, I think everywhere is the ability to save football guys time, you know, whether it's college teams, whether with the, um, the lack of time, those guys, the lack of access they have to their own players, you know, 20 hours a week with the kids, so they're allowed to, to do football stuff or whether it's the NFL where you're just trying to be as efficient as possible with your time or whether it's Chris and, and other media guys and commentators who just need to save some of this time and cut through the, 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 the length of time that it's taken them to get through all this stuff. That's what PFF does. I think. Yeah. I think a lot of, you know, his ideas and the things that he said, you know, what would be great if we had this? And that would make not only my life easier, but a fan's life easier if they're trying to find information about their team or the rest of the league. Uh, a lot of that stuff's gone into our PFF Edge and Elite products. A lot of those ideas and streamlining it and adding more information so that a fan can come in and whether you're trying to win your fantasy league, whether you're just trying to win a week in fantasy, whether you're trying to win a bet, if that's if that's your thing. Or if you just want to know everything you could possibly know about the players in the NFL, you know, all that stuff has rolled into those edge and elite packages. And I think a lot of that was spurred from, uh, you know, Chris's preparation and suggestions that he made. And of course, um, all of the preparation that we do for all the work, you know, whether it's a podcast or whether it's just simply doing radio or TV. So 
Um, you know, that's why I think we're really excited about Edge and Elite and what that, uh, you know, our ability to kind of roll those products back out to the fans because there's so much information for any type of football fan. And that's why we're so excited about them. Um, you know, we're going to kind of wrap up this whole thing here. And again, I cannot, I cannot suggest enough to go back through the archive and kind of hit each part of the history of PFF because I think there is a little something in there for everyone. I keep saying this is this is a podcast not just for football but for you know for business. You know, hear hear from some smart business people like a Neil, like a Chris, like a Khaled, uh, guys that that helped build this company with uh, with business sense, with hard work. I, I've learned a lot through the whole process as well. Not only working here, but just you know going through the interviews and uh, listening to these guys. But is there anything that stood out to you, Sam? We've had, uh, I think it's six episodes now. You and I kicked it off. We talked to Neil, Ben, who, you know, the architect of the PFF system, Khaled, who's the, the most important man at PFF, Ian, who knows nothing about football, and he writes the code <laughs> for us, uh, Brian, who is our business development guy, who's on the road and, you know, working with every single NFL team, and Rick Drummond, who's managing a big chunk of the company now. So we've hit on so many different people nathan our director of analytics so so many different angles anything that really stood out to you along the way as we as we uh took the trip down memory lane yeah i mean i think it's amazing when you do take a minute to sit back and reflect where it all came from you know i wasn't quite there at the very very beginning but i was as close as it gets to that point and, and just kind of going back and thinking that you know from a personal point of view i was you know, still living at home, just straight out of college, was just doing the odd game, um, you know, part time, basically just to kill a bit of time, you know, and then, um, you know, got the opportunity to actually turn this into a, something of a job. You know, we all went through the, the kind of the sacrifice years where we were earning not a lot at all subsistence wage just to to keep doing this, to be able to keep doing this and try and turn it into something. And then ultimately, the the force of all those people combined, um, you know, sacrificing uh, a potentially better wage elsewhere to be able to turn a company and a, a, a thing that we loved into something better, allowed this company to grow and to flourish and to become what it's now become. And then obviously, you hit that real catalyst in a, a guy like Chris Collinsworth coming on and being able to take this to a, a completely different level. And, and you just see the explosion that that PFF has, has gone in now. But I think the business part of what you were talking about is important. And also the, the ability for people to see, a, a, you know, a way into football, because a lot of people, guys that may love the sport and love watching it, love analyzing, it, love writing about it. You see it as a closed shop, you know, the, it's the NFL. And if you're not, already part of that old boys network and you don't already have some kind of nepotism in you're not getting in there but i think pff and places like us represent another way into that that fraternity you know you can there are ways to get a job in football that don't require knowing somebody in the nfl already and and a lot of guys now you know we've, you've heard a lot of them on this show but there are guys now that are coming into this the pff um fold you know guys that haven't had any other experience or getting in there by hard work the way we did and, and moving up the chain still yeah i did think a couple of years ago that that's kind of what we would become or that would be a goal for what we'd become was a place where if you wanted to get to the nfl you could do it through pff if you wanted to uh just not get into the nfl but do football you could you could do pff or if you're a former player former coach and um, whether it's a transitional stage or more of a destination, it was an opportunity to do football and to kind of do it at a high level. So now you see guys like Gunther Cunningham, who, man, is he fun to talk to, just so passionate, uh, loves loves football, understands football. Obviously, he's been coaching for so many years, but really loves the numbers. He's over 70 years old, loves the numbers, and loves he loves learning at over 70 years old, Sam. It's amazing listening to him obviously we we learn a ton from him but then he comes back and he says you know your numbers say that that's amazing that either backs up what i'm saying so it, or it actually has opened my eyes to a, a different way of looking at this player or this team or whatever it might be so guys like gunther cunningham coming in zach robinson former nfl quarterback coming in and we have a bunch of other 
former NFL players training right now. I don't think I don't know if we've announced them as uh, employees yet, so to speak. But it, it is kind of becoming a place where you know the football guys can can be here and and get involved and uh, you know with our growth in the NFL college and eventually in high school. And then on the, uh, you know, with our fans and, and on the consumer side, there's there's definitely a lot of opportunities here. And it's going both ways as well. I think that'll increase as we, you know, that um, integration between PFF and the NFL becomes closer and closer. And, and as the years go on, we've already sent a couple of guys that have worked at PFF to the NFL in a couple of different capacities. You know, uh, guys might know Bobby Slowick from previously on the podcast and just generally from pff bobby was with the redskins came to work at pff is now working with the 49ers so he bounced from the nfl to us and back to the nfl um you know we've also sent somebody to within an organization somewhere in the the front office that was working at um pff before so and i think that'll increase the you know the more yeah. teams are comfortable with pff um the longer you know we work together i think that'll be a much uh a much more widely traveled road as we go on yeah absolutely i i, I agree and um you know i'm not a homer i'm not a pff homer but i kind of am and I'm, I'm honestly i'm sam i'm really proud of the company i'm proud of where we've come uh chris uh, was obviously a big catalyst in that so very appreciative to what uh to what he did but all you know it's not just him getting involved but it's it's having a vision it's not just hey let me get involved and then we'll we'll end it if if you were a fly on the wall in a meeting with chris or neil or rick or anybody at pff now you would think that we were still that startup company i mean there's still motivation to grow to get our name out there and to just uh, do as much as we can to help uh, shape the landscape of football with just what we feel is uh, unique and different type of data. So, um, you know, the motivation's still there. We appreciate all the feedback from fans. We're very willing to take it, uh, even take more in. So hit us up on Twitter at PFF underscore Steve at PFF underscore Sam cannot, uh, cannot push enough. Just going back, go through the archive. So many interesting characters that help shape PFF. Um, I, I think I really liked the, you know, when talking to Brian Hall and Nathan Yankee, I think the insight that Brian gave as far as how he interacts with NFL teams, I think that's something that fans uh, are really interested in, just how the different NFL teams use us. You've been in a lot of meetings, Sam. Sometimes you give so, some of your IT advice, right? You, you throw some IT <laughs> advice at those guys. What Flatten do you do with the database? Flatten those databases. Always. NFL teams. But we're up to 29 NFL teams now as of this recording. Brian had some great insight because he works with those teams on a daily basis. Uh, Nathan, you know, we had a lot of fun talking about his uh you know weight gate nate weight gate when he you know our, our numbers guy lied about his weight you you predicted it to a t and, my single uh, favorite pff moment ever i think <laughs> you came away with some straight cash that night because you predicted his 28 pounds overweight or whatever it was uh right on the button uh, he was kind of showing it you know he's showing it at, you know, <laughs> well forget it poor nate uh, I asked him if he was a spy. That's all in the archive. Check out the Nathan Yankee episode, the Brian Hall episode. And uh, we put Khaled and and Ben on the same episode. Like, they're kind of like your brethren from the early years, uh, the guys who truly, truly shaped this entire company. Uh, so that is a fantastic episode to listen to as well because they're such unique individuals who – really are as crucial as anybody as far as the the engine that makes pff tick so with a tear in my eye we wrap up the history of pff it's been a lot of fun going back and uh reliving some stories and, and trying to just trying to let some fan fans in on you know what's going on behind the scenes at pff it's not just a, a bunch of robots there's uh there's some fun people and personalities and uh a lot of hard work and sweat that's gone into this thing yeah i think the big takeaway from the end of all this is it's the same people that are now running the company that were running it way back when. You know, I think that's when you look at startups and successful companies that came from nothing, I think that's a trend. You know, the ones that do really well are the ones that have the same people all the way through. Um, you know, they may get resources along the way. They may add 
key components here and there, pick up the right people along the way. But the guys that had that vision to begin with, the guys that put in the hard work and built the thing up, if they stay, that's when you create something impressive. And I think that's what we're discovering now, you know, kind of realizing we, we made some mistakes along the way. You know, we we try to deviate from that. You just trying to make sure you have a secure job going forward? Here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that sorted nailed, nailed right now. Um, you know, the, we, we brought in some guys that didn't necessarily take us in the right direction. And we've we've circled back. You know, we've come back to the guys that took things in the right direction all the way along. And now those are the guys that are going to bring this company even further forward. And I think that it's the same with our um you know, with the products that we sold, you know, we tried, we made some mistakes with, with what we've done with the offering, uh, packages to the, the fans, but now we're trying to fix all that and we're trying to create the best products we've ever had. And I think, uh, edge and elite are, are right up there. You know, we've added back a lot of the stuff that people were upset that we took away from them in premium stats. Um, and especially with the elite package, it's, it's going to be a test bed for everything good that we do. You know, anything that we come up with that we think is a great idea, it's going to end up getting folded into that. And that's only going to become a more valuable package the longer it goes. So, you know, we're trying to make things more user friendly. You know, we've spent a lot of time, um, trying to win back the fans that we turned off when we did take away premium from you guys. So hopefully you guys are, uh, starting to receive some of that, goodwill um back and we can all move off into the twilight together i love it that was really well said sam really well said because <laughs> no, i, I just want i lost the run of that ray right, right at the end right 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 off the uh, the we'll rails cut we'll cut it oh yeah at the right yeah time. taylor's yeah. on it don't yeah, worry right. we're good i mean no but seriously though we we do have such a passion i mean you put you put us in a room you me whether it's neil k ben whoever it is rick i mean there is a passion to provide good products, whether it's to teams, whether it's to the media, whether it's to fans. And it's always been what we, what we want. And, you know, I don't, I don't want people to ever think that PFF is sitting on their high horse when we, you know, put grades out there, put stats out there, whatever it is, you know, we're truly the, the same way I came into the company. I just thought, wow, that is a fascinating way to look at football. I, I always use the story. Brandon Spikes graded better than Gerard Mayo back in 2010 in a game where Spikes only had three tackles and Mayo had about 14, whatever it was. And that's kind of like what hooked me. Like, wow, you guys are just looking at the game in a different way from a different angle. And I thought that was uh, what attracted me to PFF. So to me, that's, that's what we're always trying to do. Sam summed it up. We're trying to do that with our edge and elite packages. And like I said earlier in the show, you have a chance to win that free PFF Elite package, the $200 package that has our signature stats back from the dead and available to you, the fans, our award-winning fantasy football analysis that helped me win multiple leagues last year. And I don't put a ton of time into fantasy football. I kind of just use the PFF tools when I need them, and I have a lot of success because that's how good and valuable they are. And... There's a draft product coming out at two, at two. So you'll have a draft guide that's going to be coming out in July looking ahead to the 2018 season. So we're just trying to pack it with value, PFF Elite, and you have a chance to win it for free. Just leave a five-star review on iTunes. All we need is your Twitter handle or an email address, some way to get in contact with you. And then we can announce you as a winner on the show, a winner of a free PFF Elite package. So there's a raffle. That's it, Sam history of pff go get yourself some pff elite and uh anything else for the fans to just uh take it home oh good deal we're in the books welcome back hope you had that outstanding vacation back to hard work back to helping pff grow once again appreciate all the feedback we've gotten from you fans and be sure to tune in next week we have more fun off-season content we're going to take you guys into the grading system a little bit as much as we can. We'll give you guys some insight, how we grade, how we do some things. Give us your suggestions on Twitter. What do you want to hear on the podcast? Because we're going to we're gonna show some of our secrets, I think, Sam. So we're going to have a lot of fun over these next few weeks. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll talk again next week. <laughs>